Hello there, it's Ralph and uh, myself again this week doing the weekly roundup. Um, Ralph is here, and uh, what's that? Be- what's that behind your head, Ralph? Oh, behind my head. I, yeah. I don't know. It's my. It's. Uh, I don't know. I never noticed this. Uh, it's your book, bookshelf. is it? Uh, yeah. Happiness Rules by uh, oh, Mark wow. Edwards, which is your which is your pen name. Yeah, um, fantastic. Don't um, know what I got there. Can I just say because yeah. last time you mentioned that some of our listeners apparently thought I'm the sort of guy who would go out into the public sphere wearing tweed jackets. Yeah, that's so right. We did just, say that last time. Just yes. say that I'm not doing this, and I just wore my t-shirt Look at that. Today just to make oh, sure drop. that everybody nice. understands. Nice. No, right. you definitely, definitely not a, a you know a potential tweed wearer. Well, not not cool. that we've got anything against it, you know, but it's just. Yeah. No, of course not. We're um, not Anyway, anyway, right. So today, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing um, we're going to be talking about um, two things really. One is path out of COVID, uh, and the second thing we're picking up on a couple of um, some interesting stories um, that have come out this week on a you know per company basis. So mm-hmm. actually, it's going to be Twitter and Rivian. So that's what we're going to be talking about as well. So anyway, let's start off um, with the initial um, thing about let's talking about a path out of COVID. Now, obviously, one of the things that is happening at the moment is that um, China is having a very tricky uh, a path out of COVID. Um, we had Shanghai lockdowns. We've had lots of um, other lockdowns as well. This is all part of um, China's zero uh, COVID policy. Um, and so I think that they are having a, a tricky time. Now, um, again, I don't know exactly at the moment, but it seems that, yeah, I do wonder whether, I mean, some of it is supposed to be Part, it's partly due to the fact that um, it seems that um, not enough people at the vulnerable, in the you know, who are vulnerable, um, have have had the vaccines or the full course of vaccines. Um, and the other thing is, I wonder as well what's happened with regards because the efficacy of the Chinese vaccine. I think there are a few. One of them is by Sinopharm, but you know. Uh, I, I remember at least one of these vaccines had an efficacy rate of only 55%. Um, and, you know, for a drug to be um, approved for use, it has to be, has to have a, a 50% uh, efficacy rate, which is quite, which is basically a coin flip as to whether it's going to work or not. Now, um, so I, I imagine, I, so I don't know, it depends on how many people just received um, the Chinese vaccines or whether they got a mixture, I don't know. Um, but anyway, whatever happens, things aren't looking great at the moment. Um, but, you know, what, what are your thoughts on that, Ralph? Well, yeah, ex- exactly. I mean, if we're talking about the way out of COVID, then what I find actually quite interesting currently is that there are two things which are being contrasted here. One is the way in which China is doing it, yeah, which is the uh, notorious no COVID policy, yeah. And then we have, let's say, the free world or the Western world, or you know, all these sort of industrialized countries in Europe, the US, New Zealand, Australia, mm-hmm. and they are now all living with the virus. We have mm-hmm. stopped our lockdowns. And if you, if you go into London, I can only ever speak for London because that's where, where I live. I don't know what things are like elsewhere in the country. But if you go to the West End in London, I mean, it's it's like COVID never happened. Mm. Um, and I think that this is the way in which we, we, we this is the state, I think, to which we were all hoping we could yeah. actually get, you know, live with COVID. COVID is not going to disappear. But yeah. now in our societies here, where we have a very high penetration of vaccination now, mm-hmm. uh, it was hard one, but now we have that. Uh, we are able to live with the virus. Yes, there are still death ray, uh, there are still deaths, and that is tragic. Mm-hmm. The mortality rate I was able enough to calculate that recently appears to be hovering around the one percent, one to one point five percent really oh, yeah. mark now. Mm-hmm. And that is pretty much exactly the same as we've had um, from the flu mm. for the last 10, 20, 30 years. Mm. But other thing, so at the end of the day, I think westernized societies, free world type societies, are learning to live with the virus. Mm-hmm. Whereas China is still focused on the no COVID at all or zero COVID policy. And I don't think they are going to be able to get there. 
I mean, mm. nobody's going to get there. I mean, it, it, the the prerequisite of living with the virus, first of all, would have to be to roll out an effective mm. vaccine. And you've already yeah. made some comments on that. It appears that the Chinese vaccine, uh, which was implemented, wasn't very effective. And then, of course, we have huge logistical problems in, in, in the country, which I believe has 1.4 billion in mm -hmm. inhabitants or, mm -hmm. or, or something like this. So I, my fear is that if China does not um, increase the penetration of the vaccination rate and go and mm -hmm. align itself, its policy to fight COVID with what we're seeing here in our in our societies, then uh, we're going to see supply chain interruptions caused by an interruption of productivity from yep. what from a country which has been called the world's uh, product manufacturer, I believe, mm. the world's manufacturer, mm. is, is going to be more more recurrent. Mm. So, mm. Fi final comment for me: interesting for me to see that this is happening in China. It is having very material negative impacts on the world economy. Yeah. On the other hand, we have a completely different tale here in the westernized societies where we're living with COVID and I think where people are more than ready to leave their homes, leave lockdown and start interacting with others yeah. socially again. Absolutely. And actually, I mean, that brings us on to um, a couple of things, really, which is one of them is the fact that um, you know, more people are in uh, in in, in uh, you know Europe and America uh, certainly are, are um, booking up holidays, aren't they? I mean, and that's we've seen that fact that Tui um, is is talking a very good game. So um, Tui is is, is um, uh, you know Europe's biggest um, holiday company. Um, uh, they're talking very good game, saying that bookings are really strong. Um, but then the the chief exec then you know, sort of goes on to say um, that uh, he doesn't think that there are going to be many last minute deals and things, which I mean, I, you know, I've said uh, I expect him to say that um, are you re are you realistically going to get a chief executive who wants to keep his job um, uh, sitting there and saying, actually, people, don't worry, you don't have to book. Um, there'll be loads of deals later on. You're never going to get that going. Um, I, uh, you know, I maintain my um, my position that I believe that uh, the, the longer we go without any government, especially without any government, particular government help or in terms of bills and things like that um that people are going to think do you know what i just can't afford to go on holiday and they will postpone or the and or they will be more inclined to do staycations which they can maybe you know do for a shorter period of time um and so still have that vacation feeling but not quite um you know have to have the outlay of of say uh, going uh, going further afield um but um you know what, what do you what do you think about that ralph in terms of that you know the holidays first of all i was surprised to actually see the announcement from tui basically mm. saying that they have a full order book yeah uh, and, and i agree with you of course i mean the the ceos are going to say oh don't book now book later it's going to be a better deal <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, yeah, well, yeah of course he's not going to say that if you want to read a little bit perhaps too much into that statement it sort of says to me that the order book may be full now, but he's trying to make sure that uh, TUI is going to have a good year of revenues at mm. the time that the cost of living crisis surely eats into discretionary mm. incomes of many, and mm. and second, following two very poor years for TUI. Mm. So he's, he's, almost, he's almost doing like a fire sale. He's almost saying, yeah. buy while stocks last, you know. Yeah. You know, we 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 have they haven't got much left, so everybody buys, and then and then it's gonna say, wow, look at that, we mm. just got got into more stock. Um, yeah. So in other words, that's all cool. I was surprised to see that there is a full order book, and that got me onto my 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 train of thought. I mean, this must be. It highlights two, at least two, conflicting trends. Mm. One is we are getting out of COVID. And mm. I think we're all desperate to interact again, to have fun mm. and go out mm. and sit in restaurants and go on holiday. Now it's summer and that is going to be cool and have a beer with our friends, etc. Mm -hmm. Not sit at home, not do Zoom calls anymore, work from mm -hmm. home. That's another trend. 
I was just the other day in the city of London, uh, and it's beginning. With me, in fact. Be... Oh, with you, in fact. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, I, I heard you were in London, yeah. yeah. yeah cool. Cause you yeah, told me because you were sitting right in front of me, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> But it was great though, wasn't it? I mean, just to meet up, you know, obviously I have only seen you on a screen um, for, I think it must have been for about three years. I mean, That's it. Exactly. We, you know, I've, I've known you for, I reckon, so, well, 20 years, maybe in fact more than 20 that. 20 years, yeah. Um, and, you know, whatever we've done in the city, you know, uh, going to different companies and things. We've always kept in, in contact and had lunches over the years and things and we've gone out, you know, gone out for beers and things. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it was, it was, it was great. Um, that's, you know. and, and that's the thing, of course. I mean, uh, yeah. if you're my mate, I see you on the screen. Yeah. You know, that's not just not good enough. I mean, if you go yeah. and have lunch together and you have personal contact, yeah. that's not replaceable. Yeah. And so you can take that. You want, you want to see people in the flesh, don't you, really? Yeah, well, so, which which brings us sure to you, really, but which, I mean, which, it was still good. <laughs> which brings us which brings us to our next subject, grinder. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I was trying to look for a good <laughs> link there. Yeah, you haven't found one. I thought it was seamless, mate. It's seamless, right? So, so okay. So anyway, the story with grinder is um, for those for those who are not sure what grinder is, um, it is a, a dating app. Um, you know, for a specific audience. Um, and I think that um, uh, what, you know, the sort of story this week is the fact that um, it is very much um, uh, looking to do an IPO. So it's, it's going for flotation. Um, it is going to do that via a SPAC. Um, so that is a, a very interesting because we have said, I mean, I, I know I've been saying on other podcasts and reels and various other things that um, the number of um, SPAC deals has, has really reduced. Very recently, we were talking about how um, uh, Goldman Sachs were not working on any new SPACs, for instance, which I found quite interesting because usually Goldman, they're the first people to do something and the last people to leave um, doing something. So um, so I think that uh, th- that was particularly interesting. So so anyway, with Grindr, I think that it's it's an interesting uh, it's an in- it was potentially very interesting IPO because um, unlike a lot of um, SPACs that seem to be like you're buying the valuation because of what you believe it's going to be able to do in the future with really not very much track record at all, which is why they go, they can't do, you know, do it via SPAC route because it, it just accelerates the process. Um, Grind is interesting because um, Grinder has quite a well, reasonably long history. I bet, but it was founded in, in, in 2009 or something. So, you know, it has had a, a track record. It's got a, you know, it's, it's got a well-known, um, uh, reputation and things um, and I, I really think that um, it should do well because people are doing uh, you know people are, are, are emerging from lockdown um, I think I, it does feel to me that things are certainly normalizing but also maybe people just need to you know, feel like they need, you know, they want this um, other kinds of interaction as well um, and I think that um, that that obviously Grinder provide is one of the many that provides that service, um, and and I think that you know to actually have a flotation is 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 pretty interesting, and you would have thought is is okay in terms of the timing. Although I mean it's not ideal with with a war going on, um, but you know having said that, you know people are I think want you know wanting to have um, more interaction. Well, yeah, I mean, this is all, I mean, the t- 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 timing is always a difficult one, but you- you're obviously right. I mean, we have the war, we have China, mm. supply chain interruptions, high inflation, commensurately increasing interest rates, uh, discretionary income uh, of people melting, uh, etc. So none of these things are positive. Mm. But at the same time, what what I will also say is looking at the larger economic picture, we are also in a transition phase. We are in a transition mm. phase from exaggeratedly low interest rates to mm. what unfortunately is going to look like higher interest rates. Mm-hmm. Um, and it is the transition phase which is particularly painful. Mm. Once the economic metrics uh, like inflation, interest rates are 
stabilizing at a sustainably higher level mm -hmm. that are not going to be expected to rise even more. Mm. We are back in a situation where the underlying growth trends of the economy are going to make themselves felt and can be priced confidently into stock prices. Mm. So mm. yes, to your point, you are right. That is not the that part may not actually be a good environment for any type of IPO, but you have the underlying growth dynamics for social um, dating sites yeah. are, are excellent currently mm. because of the other trend which we've yeah. been discussing. As the world is coming out of COVID, of course you want to meet up, you want to mm. have drinks, etc. We we mm. have drinks, as we as we said. Uh, mm. Any kind of any kind of social interaction is going to benefit from this. Mm. You have Tinder, um, the, the by now uh, classical uh, dating sites like Match.com and mm. whatever else this might be. You have Grinder. Uh, I think Grinder and Tinder, perhaps at least originally, used to live in a world of perhaps a little bit more transient. Uh, Very diplomatically put there, I think, there, uh, Ralph, yes. Well, I think that's right, though, isn't it? <laughs> yes, yes. So, Match.com. Yes. I mean, I, I can say that I, I yeah. met my wife on Match.com. Did you? Really? Yes. Really? I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't Match.com. It was dating directly. It doesn't really yeah. matter. It's the same oh, thing. Awesome. Yeah. I didn't know that. And, 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 so, know that. Uh, yeah. and they, so I have some experience here. I mean, the yeah. entire organization there, the operational layout of the platform is geared towards... Um, um, introducing yourself to others in in terms of a potential long term mm. relationship. Mm. Whereas I think Tinder and Grinder can be that, but it's not necessarily mm. um, the target. The, no. the, the target might be to meet somebody who's nice, and then you go off, or, or you may not. Uh, but it's uh, I see you're grinning there. You have never done. No, that. I'm just. No, I'm just. I'm just a, I am just a joyous of heart. That's all it is. No. That's all that is. That's all that is. Uh, no, if, I mean, I think... if you bring if you bring these businesses to market, I think yeah. now would be exactly yeah. the time to do this. Yeah. So I think it's good. What is also interesting though is actually you know I I do think this this is a good time. Um, and but I, I also it was interesting. I just had a quick look at the share price of what has been going on with Match.com. So Match, uh, sorry, yeah. Match Group yes. owns Match.com, Tinder, OkCupid, a whole load of other, uh, plenty of fish, loads and loads of other um, uh, uh, brands um, uh, in this space. And actually, I would say the overall trend uh, has been down. Um, so mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm wondering you know why why that would be um because like i say i feel that if we are coming out of um covid um people are going to be using this more or should be using this more because there's a number of reasons aren't there i mean you could say that you've been cooped up for a long time you've not been able to make these kind of you know connections um and you might feel like you need a little bit you know, a little bit of help um, and therefore going on there and putting your details in and stuff. I mean, it does, I, I, to me anyway, I mean, it makes makes a lot of sense. So, um, yeah, uh, like I say, I, 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 I would have thought another, they would do all right. Yeah, no, definitely. That's, I think, another advantage of Tinder and Grindr, uh, as, as far as I know. These are, Tinder is the side with the swiping, isn't it? I believe so, yes. Yeah. And, and so, and I'm not, by the way, for any listeners or people who are watching this, um, I'm not. I'm not pretending. I don't know. I really. I don't actually. I've never, never used it myself. But obviously, everyone's talking about swiping right and swiping left and yeah. stuff. So yeah. In case my wife is watching, I don't know anything about these. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. Having that okay. caveat out of the way, awesome. what I mean yep. is that these things take less. Uh, perhaps input uh, in mm. on a match.com you have to do a profile and this and that mm. and this is actually lighter this is light yes. light light to touch use so I, I, I think the um, dynamics are excellent for, for mm. this to, to yeah. your point uh, um, match.com share plus has been trending down over the last several years mm. well I mean th these things are always difficult to gauge but I would think that COVID and lockdowns have driven a bit of a truck through all mm. of these things because clearly mm. if you can't meet somebody you can't gauge what they're like, mm. and uh, therefore there's little point in mm. engaging with others through Match.com, Grindr, mm. Tinder, whatever. Mm. Uh, 
now, as I keep repeating, I think the time is right, but of course the dynamics are going to exert themselves quite slowly. I mean, it's yeah. not as if yesterday we were in lockdown, today it's party on. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, no, it's exactly, yeah, you're right. People mm-hmm. are going to have to learn to trust that mm-hmm. these trends are going to be sustainable, that mm-hmm. we're not going to get another lockdown tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And that is, I think, one aspect. And another aspect is I saw the uh, Duke and Duchess of Cambridge talking about one of their charitable causes being uh, helping people out of loneliness. Yes. And I think in their case, it was mostly targeted um, to the sort of social demographic group of elderly people who lost mm-hmm. some or all of their mobility. But of course, we can take that as, as evidence that I think a lot of people are grappling with mm. the effects, the longer term effects yeah. of of COVID. They mm. may have lost their friends, friends might, might have moved away, mm. the contacts have uh, solidified or, you know, you don't know how to do that anymore so mm. much. And so, so anyway, all of this, I think, points towards a potentially um, successful IPO. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, should be interesting that. Um, Right. Um, so let's talk about a couple of other things. So um, uh, two two other uh, stories I thought were particularly interesting. We've got to talk about Twitter. Um, so, uh, you know, the Twitter drama has been dragging on now for, I don't know, three weeks, two, three weeks. So we've got um, we, so we had Elon Musk saying that you know, building up a stake in uh, in Twitter. Then they offered him a, stake, uh, uh, a seat on the board. He said yes. Then he changed his mind. Then it turns out he wants to buy the whole company. Then we had, um, we've had, uh, d- there were two senior departures this week um, from from Twitter, which is suggesting that everything is moving towards um, uh, uh, Elon Musk, um, you know, take, taking up his position. Um, Tesla share price has fallen because everyone thinks, how can he be chief exec of Tesla? at a very crucial time and um, a, a, you know, CEO of Twitter at the, at the same time, along with all the other stuff he does. Um, so it was all, it's all pointing towards this. And then just, oh, and the other thing as well, him saying that um, uh, he thinks that, you know, he, he envisages um, uh, Donald Trump getting back onto Twitter um, and, you know, reversing that ban. Um, and then we get this thing right at the end of the week that says, actually, um, I'm, I'm going to suspend, um, I'm going to suspend my interest. Uh, and it is pending on, um, a, a, um, disclosure of the percentage of, uh, I think spam and bot accounts right. um, on Twitter. That to me sounds like he's, it, it sounds like he's looking for a technical way out. Um, and, yeah, I don't know, because I wonder, now this may well be conspiracy theory central, right? But <laughs> I wonder whether if he can get out of this technically, the share price, so we've already seen the share price fall like 20% or something yeah. initially. Um, right, yeah. So, because I have been thinking, if he ever gets out of this, how far is the share price going to fall? Um, and we got a bit of a, a glimpse of that. So I wonder if he can get out of it technically the share price will dive and he will then be able to come back at a point where it is a lot lower. He is going to be able to then say, actually, yes, I will buy it, but I won't need so much money. Um, and, uh, and that way he gets what he wants anyway, but for a, for a lower price. So by him saying that at the moment, in, in a way it's a win. I, in a way, I'd say it's a win-win. So he either he just carries on buying it, and that's fine because that, that's what everyone's expecting. Or if he gets out of it on a technicality, the share price is going to dive, and he can make another offer, but at a much lower price. I don't know. Do, do you do you think so? Um, oh, I think so. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Why there not? Are, there are a lot of things to un- unpick here. I mean, mm. first of all. How far is the share price going to fall? I mean, mm. I haven't actually done the maths on this, but mm. you would think that the share price has now corrected back to where it was mm. um, before, and the premium, the acquisition premium, has just dropped out of the share price. Yeah. Um, so it shouldn't really fall much further, even if mm. it was uh, scuppered. The second point is if either party 
uh, go back from the deal, there's the normal um, uh, no completion yeah, penalty, penalty yeah. Yeah. In, in this, and this is $1 billion in this particular yeah. case. Of, of course, that you wouldn't can find actually... that down the back of a sofa, though, surely. Of course it you does. Know, it's, it's not it's, a it is just towers or wherever he lives. Yes, but it still means that he would need to uh, pocket. The, you know, the economics of what you're suggesting are are becoming um, quite difficult to quite difficult to justify. If the share price mm. falls, then you pay the one billion dollar penalty, and then of course you won't be allowed to actually bid for Twitter right right away again. I mean, mm. stock exchange rules will mean that you cannot come back to the party for another six months at least. I don't know mm. exactly where we are on this. Well, not unless someone months. else comes along. So this is the thing. He, he, he could give himself six... Wo- uh, see, I, I also <laughs> think that it's not just the acquisition premium that will, is knocked out by this. Yeah, because so So we've just had two senior people departing Yes. You've got a chief executive who's been in there for, what, I don't know, five minutes or something. And, and I mean, he, he's not going to be in in a super safe position. Um, and um, a, a lot of Twitter employees will rightly feel pretty um, unnerved by the whole thing. Could well, you know, could, could well leave. I mean, it's all of these things means that I, I actually think that, you know the the, uh, the company's been really going sideways for ten years, um, and we just had obviously this sudden interest, and I just think that that could dis- that could disappear. You know that could um, potentially disappear and unnerve people to put them in a in in such a way that would put them in a worse position than they were before. Um, uh, Musk it, came it, along. It's possible. Uh, it's also possible that Elon Musk is just being Elon Musk. Mm. Because, as we know, uh, he has a history of doing erratic things. Um, mm. He's, of course, a, as I said before, a genius, and so perhaps we shouldn't wish to measure him by the standards of normal people. Mm. Uh, but just to give you one example of many, when he bought um, through Tesla into crypto, into Bitcoin, mm. I mean, there was, was a massive investment in Bitcoin. Mm. And then I think about three weeks later, he tweeted... Uh, that um, Bitcoin is against our standards at Tesla because mm-hmm. the you know electricity involved in the proof of working process is is just too too much and is mm. environmentally unfriendly and so it's mm. against our standards. Mm. So basically, you have somebody who bought massively into Bitcoin and basically then turns around and said, Ah, what I've just done is against my philosophical standards. Oh, well, yeah. this doesn't really uh, yeah. work very well. So maybe, yeah, that's true, maybe that's he true. just basically looks at Twitter and then he sees this one metric of 5% bots and mm. um, bot accounts. And the uh, perhaps this was done a little bit hastily. It's possible. Mm. So maybe mm. maybe he's going to... I, I don't know. I, I would predict it's still going to go, it's still going to go through. Mm. Okay. Plus Interesting. Robots, yeah. We can certainly see. It's, it's going to be, I mean, it's not going to be a dull ride, is it? It's never a dull ride. Never a dull ride. Um, so let's talk, um, uh, going from dull rides to smooth rides. Oh um, <laughs> sorry, again, trying to, trying to get this seamless thing going on. Um, it's, it's, um, Riv, um, it's Rivian. Um, so Rivian, it makes uh, electric at the moment, makes electric pickup trucks. Um, it's been whinging um, recently about um, uh, production problems, supply chain shortages, all, all the rest of it. Um, and, uh, you know, it launched it launched its pickup truck fairly recently. Um, anyway, it turns out that um, Ford sold a uh, Ford has a chunk of um, stock in Rivian. Uh, it's sold down some of it, but it's not sold everything um, because I guess, you know, ostensibly it is doing its own truck, which it launched very recently. The Ford F-150 Lightning, which is doing very well. Um, so in a way, it's like I you think that maybe when they made this um, investment in Rivian, it was at an early stage and it was or relatively early stage and that it was maybe hedging its bets potentially for, um, uh, you know, they want a, an electric pickup truck out there at some point and you know, hopefully it's theirs. But in case it isn't, they bought into Rivian. Um, but I the thing that really struck me was it was a bit weird so that you had um, 
Ford selling off, uh, or the news came, coming out of Ford selling off this stake in Rivian. And then a couple of days later, it turns out that Rivian is doing a recall um, of its trucks for a fault um, that it found. And to me, the timing really s- smells a bit fishy because um, they those those two things could well have been a complete coincidence but it does seem rather strange that you have um uh the you know ford selling out a, a part of its a, a, you know a reasonable shareholder selling out of a part of its stake just a day or two before it, um a, a, a recall is announced so it just seems a bit strange to me and i surely to goodness this means that you know inv- investors are going to be annoyed with this and you know this is yet another Law, lawsuit, you know, class action lawsuit waiting to happen potentially. But what, what do you reckon? Am I, again, am I just being conspiracy theorist central here? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think so. Um, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I don't really have anything to say on this because I don't look right. behind it and I would always expect people to act yeah. uh, within the regulations of the stock exchange. You know, as a quoted business, Rivian has a regulated duty to inform shareholders. Yes, I agree. And no doubt they will have done this. I mean, I don't follow Rivian in that close Mm. detail, but obviously there will have been a press release. Mm -hmm. And and that would have been going out to all shareholders Mm. at the same time. So I don't think that necessarily. But what I find interesting in this is that it's it's sort of it's it's sort of it, there's a more general wobble with, mm. with with all these businesses which haven't got a track record that are coming to mm. the market and mm-hmm. are being received by the market with great fanfare yeah on the expectation of um, their position in a tr- potentially transformational technology yeah which clearly electric vehicles is going to be the mm way of the future there's no doubt about that Mm. and if you can manufacture a reliable um, high-tech vehicle which sits in that sector then Mm. very clearly that's a highly viable uh, commodity Mm. and uh, we've seen this in the space of uh, personal vehicles and suvs well Mm. not so much actually more like normal cars let's say Mm -hmm. but we haven't really seen that so much in the space of trucks Mm. but it is Exactly the space of trucks, where you actually think mm. that electric vehicles are going to make a huge splash in the future. Mm. Mm. This sort of potential growth development, which is priced into the IPO price and then the share price development, yeah. which is very sensitive to setbacks of this nature, which mm. may actually have a more profound impact than the actual commercial impact that it has. You know, recalling some cars fixing some problem uh, shouldn't actually be an issue so much. But well, it's it is... a common occurrence, isn't it? I mean, it does happen to all cars at exactly. various it, points, isn't it? it over happens. over their lifetime, they, you know, like something wrong with the airbags or something wrong with exactly. some bit of the, yeah. Precisely. But it is, yeah. it, it is, if it happens to an incumbent, incumbent who hasn't got any much track record, mm. then you might actually have a uh, proportionately higher negative impact yeah. on, on, on sentiment. Yeah. Absolutely. So that's more what I and and this sort of goes, uh, yeah. I mean, Twitter is not the same. It has got a huge track record. But yeah. There's the same sort of element of unpredictability of what the uh, well, what people involved with Twitter in this particular case, Elon Musk, yeah. Yeah. might do. And it's not going to be. It doesn't seem as if it is necessarily a smooth ride from IPO mm. to. Uh, mm-hmm development of of yeah. the value potential yeah fair enough but there we go i guess we'll that is a you know we'll we might as well end on that on that note this week so i i think it's good because i mean we've talked a lot recently about very big you know uh uh issues and um you know i think that it's it's nice to maybe get back to some of the Yes, individual corporate stories. I think that have that have uh, that have caught a lot of interest in the week. So, 
But anyway, um, as always, Ralph, um, thank you so much um, for being on this. It's always great fun. And, um, you know, thank you for listeners and watchers of this. Um, and uh, we'll be back again for more next week. Absolutely. Many thanks. Always good to be here. Thank you very <laughs> much, guys. Good stuff. Bye.